For the simple method, you will need a 10 mm wrench or spanner and a 10 to 15 cm piece of wire. For the advanced method, you will need the previously mentioned tools as well as wire strippers, wire cutters, a wire connector plug, two wire taps, a plastic pry tool and some needle nose pliers. You may also want a multimeter and some hot glue, but these are optional. So we're going to look over the, uh, the DRL stuff for the front lights here. Very nice. um, to do that, you're going to need your multimeter and your uh, plastic pry tool here. It's coming in here, there's a few clips on it. There's just one back here, one there. Cover comes off. If your car looks like this, where you've got your battery here and your relay box here, and you'll notice the DRL relay because it will say right in big letters there, DRL relay. Um, I think on the American models, your battery is probably over USA there and I'm day. not sure if they would have relocated that to over there. They might have done, but if yours looks like this, then great, because uh, it'll work for you. For me and the UK spec Nismo 370s, it is this middle one here. If you look at this, if you look at the diagram on the, the back, uh, sorry, the front of this, you'll see that the relay next to the DRL relay on the left it's actually the heated seat or the climate control seat uh, relay, which in my case actually has nothing in it because the Nismo doesn't have heated seats. Naughty, so. Naughty. so I've just got my, my multimeter here just set to 20 volts so that we can measure what we need to on the car. So the idea here is to bridge um, one of the connections from the heated seat relay over to the DRL um, side so that it so that they're always on and they're not going off when the headlights go off. Our DRLs need a positive signal in order to turn on. So that's why we're splicing into the heated seat relay. So if we were to um, come over to our heated seat relay and we were to measure across here, we'd actually see zero volts. Uh, however, when we turn the car on, uh, we'll actually see 12. So the idea is here, we just bridge the wire from our plus 12 from the heated seat relay over to um, our DRL relay and therefore we get lights on all the time. And you might be thinking, but are they not gonna be on all the time? No, of course not. The heated seat relay is only um, active when the car is on and shuts off when the car is off. <laughs> First thing we need to do is disconnect the battery. Just get your piece of wire, you'd slot it in to our, tw our plus 12 from here and our ground in our DRL relay like that. And we can just pop the lid on like that. Don't forget to reconnect the battery. <laughs> So that is how you get constant on uh, DRLs on the 370Z, even when your headlights come on with one single bit of wire there. Um, and if you ever wanted to go back to normal, all you have to do is just pop the cap off, pull your bit of wire out like that, get your relay, and then they will function just like they were from the factory. That was how to do it. Um, the cheap way, the easy way it works and you know, there shouldn't be any issues with that. I mean, maybe if there's a bit of vibration when you're driving, it might come loose. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do it in a way that's a bit nicer where all of those optional tools come into play and um, it's reversible and it should be a lot nicer, basically. To start with, we need to disconnect the battery again. So all you want to do is you just want to get this, um, this relay box off and there's a little clip at the back here. Just clip that off, you can spin it around, and then you'll see there's these four clips here. Yeah. Very nice. Very small, and that last one in the back corner, where's that? Just down here, in, twist. And then that cover comes off. Then we need to take the top cap off and remove the DRL relay. Yeah.
So just like before, we just want to connect that terminal there to that terminal there, which on the other side, if we flip it over, is that green wire and this brownie beigey looking wire in the middle here. So it will achieve the same job, um, but it will just look a bit nicer and it will be a bit more reliable than just having a wire bridging across the two. Yeah, I suppose something about that length, what's that, like 10 centimeters or so? Just take that and we're just gonna cut it in half. So we'll just take our wire snippers. So we just wanna snip the ends like that. We wanna keep the other one, um, well, not stripped. So we've got one piece of wire like that. And then we wanna just take our, our second piece of wire there, similar sort of thing. Just, these are gonna be the bits that go into our uh, connector. Here we go, we've got all the parts. To start making the connector, we need to put these yellow pieces on. They just need to be worked down over the cable. Then to add the metal connectors onto the wire, I like to fold the wire in half here to make it fit securely. Be sure to bend those metal crimps down that hold the connector securely to the wire. I start with my finger and then use the needle nose pliers to add some extra force. I then do the same with the two smaller ones above that ensure the connectors stay in contact with the wire. We now just need to do the same thing to the other side using the other piece of wire. <laughs> I use a small flathead screwdriver to help me get the connector into the housing. And you'll know that it's in because you can give that a tug and it won't, that won't come out now. And then you wanna take this little red piece and insert it into the housing at the top of the connector. Then just work the yellow bits into the connector using a small flathead screwdriver. So even side there, got your wire coming out and then we're gonna use this end here. Uh, that's what's gonna splice into uh, the car. We then need to do the same thing to the other side and put the red piece in the top of the connector housing. We then use the flathead screwdriver to push the yellow protectors down, being careful not to damage the cable in the process. Should have a nice little connection that fits together like that. Two wires coming out, can then clip, unclip that. Back. And waterproof. Now that we've got these, that's where we want to bring in our little um, wire splice, wire taps. Um, I think these red ones are pretty a small. You want a really small one because obviously the wires on the car are pretty small. Um, and these are just going to slot in like that. And then the other end's going to get spliced to the car. So we'll, um, we'll take that over there now. All right, this is a bit of a weird angle. So if you've got someone with a, who can give you another set of hands here, it'll probably be quite handy. But anyway, we just want to splice into that green one. We've got our connector here, which is going into the other side of this. Um, this red wire tap and then you just got to squeeze down on that little metal hook there so we'll do that now and then just squeeze a little bit to start with just to make sure that you you're clearing everything and everything looks good and then we'll just continue to squeeze the rest of that down that should be more or less held in place now so if I can let go of that get a bit more grip on it Give that a two-hander. And there we go. So that should now be spliced into that if we can untangle it from all this other crap. And then close the, the little tab on that. Then just give your, your connector down here a little pull. Seems all right. This other one seems all right as well. Then take the other cable splice and place it onto the DRL relay wire placing the connector cable in the other slot of the cable splice. Give this a nice two-hander. There we go. So again, just give everything a little tug, make sure that it's all, all secure and nice. And then we can pop the lid on the top of that. And that's good to go. I use the hot glue here just to keep the cables in place and avoid moisture from getting in, but this is me being a bit overkill. As you can see, the connectors go together and then we just want to place all the cables back into the bottom of the relay housing. It's a bit tight here, so be sure not to trap any of the cables when putting the bottom cap back on. All right, so you get that bottom, the bottom bit back on there. You can then slide that back into the the hole like that and then you can take your cap and you can put it on 
just like that. Don't forget to reconnect the battery and that's it. So that is how you do uh, constant on or always on DRLs um, on the 370Z. Obviously, um, they won't be on all the time. They'll be on when the car's on. Um, or in this case, they actually come on when the ignition is on, but not when the engine's on. So that's just something to bear in mind. They normally come on when the engine comes on, but in this case, they're coming on when the ignition comes on. So if you are sitting still for a bit um, and the engine isn't running, it might be worth turning the ignition off uh, because these will go on. But again, they're LEDs, so they're not gonna draw much power anyway. So you'll be fine. I've got these daytime running lights here. Um, they are in fact the Evo R uh, daytime running lights, but I've made some modifications to them. Made them do some more stuff like this fu funky um, indicator, sequential indication here. The start up and shut down sequence as well. There's um, something there. The paint here matches the paint on the grey bits of the bumper um, and the LEDs I've upgraded and um, epoxied in as well so they actually last a bit longer than the Evo R ones. Um, if anyone's interested in these like give me a shout, um, it's not hard to make but I can make up another set. I think these are a great addition to the car and I think they make they look a lot better over stock. Please, Okay, thank you.